Amen. Well, we're switching up some things this morning, so it'll be a little different. And we're going to get right into the preaching today. If you're in Kid City and would like to take off for Kid City, you can head out that way. There should be a responsible adult somewhere. Oh, there he is. Uh, he's rounding them up, taking them downstairs. So that's awesome. Responsible. I use that word kind of loosely with my father-in-law, but uh, you're going to have a great time down there. If you have a Bible want to turn it to Romans chapter 12, that would be fantastic. We've got a special orange bag today. I'm going to do a couple things first of all. Uh, I'm, I'm in the market for two Mr. Good Bars. I have a crackle uh, and a dark chocolate. I'll be glad to uh, swap you out. Uh, if anybody uh, would like to do that, you can. And then also, we'll get to this in a little bit, but there's this three-ring binder in there. Uh, and, and one of the reasons we're giving that to you for, there's a sticker you can put on the front there or wherever you'd like to mark yours, uh, a City Light sticker. But then also, um, that three-ring binder, you'll notice that your sermon notes are hole punch this week. And we're going to start hole punching those uh, every Sunday and so that you could take those and stick them in there. Don't you have those things like falling all over the place in your Bible or like, I'd like to hold on to these and keep these. Uh, so the theory would be is that every week you'd systematically go home and place it in there. Uh, and then you could look back maybe over the uh, few months and you could see uh, some of the different messages that we've talked about. Or you, you know, say, I wonder what that thought was or I know I wrote that down somewhere. So just a little place for you to kind of organize those and I hope that's uh, uh, a help to you. We're going to finish up this morning our sermon series, New Year's Revolution, because something needs to change. Uh, we've talked about the fact that our, uh, that our hearing needs to change. We want to hear the Word of God uh, in a new, fresh way that's soft and open to the things of God. We talked about in Romans chapter 12 being a living sacrifice and said that our heart needs to change, or really our worship, our, uh, if you will, just the dedication in which we live our life, that worship is more than just a Sunday morning service, or just the singing time in a Sunday morning service, but it really is a 24-7 lifestyle commitment uh, that we have uh, in the Lord, that we offer our bodies, our life, as a living sacrifice unto God. Just a little bit last week, I referenced the fact that there is a third item in Romans chapter 12, and that is our head, or our thinking, the way uh, that we think, that we shouldn't be conformed by this world, pressured into the world's mold, or the world's way of thinking, but that we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind, so that we can prove or test what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so that when, as a believer, we want to change the way that we think. We want to think biblically. We want to think in a way that pleases Christ. We want to think in uh, terms of truth and what is right, rather than might be maybe what is uh, relative or what is popular or what is current uh, in this departing world uh, that we live in. Now this morning, uh, I want to talk about this final subject, uh, and that is our hands. If you like the H's, there they are. You have all four of them. You can put them together. If you don't really care about alliteration, uh, you would say it this way. I want, to, I want us to think about my part in this place. Really, the idea here is of service, that as I become a living sacrifice, as God transforms the way I think to think like Him, there's something that happens from the inside out. That eventually my faith in Christ and my love for Him, His love for me and my walk with Him, it changes what I do with my hands. It changes what I do with my life. It changes what I do with my time. And we, and we mustn't, and, and we can so very easily, we mustn't get this backwards. A lot of times we think, people say, well, I, I meet people all the time. They say, oh, I need to go to church. I, know I, need to, I, need, I need to be there. I'm, I'm going to come this week. I'm, I'm going to be there. I'm like, man, that would be great. That would be awesome. But you know, sometimes wrapped up in the way people say that is, is their thinking is this. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to do all the right things. And eventually over time, I will fall in love with Jesus. Sometimes we, we can parent that way. We can lead people that way. Hey, do this. Do the, do the right thing. And we modify the behavior uh, on the outside and hope that eventually the heart will catch up. But what the Bible is speaking to us in Romans chapter 12 is something very different by the mercies of God because of His love. Because of all that He's done for us internally, there should be a change that takes place when we're saved. There is a change that takes place. And as we present ourselves as a living sacrifice, uh, and, and, and there's that renewed thinking to delete the old hard drive and upload new information uh, to it that comes from the truth, comes from the Bible, eventually it works itself to the outside. And I want to, uh, I, I know that one of the points of emphasis that I will make in our preaching this year uh, is, is going after the heart 
of the matter more than the hands. But the hands eventually should catch up with the heart. And this is, the, this is that line of logic or that reasoning we see all throughout uh, the Scriptures. And so this morning, I want us to ask this question, how do I transform my hands? Or how do I uh, transform my part in this place? How does that revolutionize? Where does that exactly need to change? And we find that here in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, where the Bible says, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but he should think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of the faith. God has given faith, grace, gifts, spiritual gifts to every believer, and according to that measure, those different measures, different, if there's 10 preachers, God gives uh, the gift of teaching but you know 90 percent if you will 40 percent 12 percent however that gets ministered out if it's if it's the gift of giving god may give someone a little bit more be able to do it a little bit better that's up to him how he deals uh, that out to people but that's what's going on in verse number three verse number four for as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office okay in our church there's a lot of different members Not everybody has the same job. Not everybody has the same gift. Not everybody has the same calling. But everybody does have a gift, a calling, an office. So we being many, verse 5, are one body in Christ and every one members one of another. We're all connected together. Uh, It's not separate. It's not them doing their thing, them doing their thing. We're we're all together as uh, many little parts that make up this whole uh, that we have here called City Light Baptist Church. So in verse 6 he says, having then gifts that differ according to the grace that is given us, we're all various different gifts, whether it's prophecy, the gift of prophecy, the Bible says prophesy according to the portion of faith. Uh, If the gift is ministry, verse 7, let us wait for our ministering. Uh, If it's teaching, teach. And um, I don't, if I, if I didn't dismiss the kids, they are already downstairs and you're welcome to go down there. I'm I'm losing my mind there if I haven't already. But um, And then number eight, uh, he that exhorteth, uh, exhortation. He that's giving has the gift of giving. Uh, do it sim- simplistically or uh, with a clear focus on God and what he wants done. Uh, and he that ruleth with diligence and he that showeth mercy with mercy. So there's a small list of some of the spiritual gifts that are given to us uh, by God to be used, our hands for service. It's not just sitting back for the rest of our life and saying, man, God loves me and I love him. Jesus is perfect, I'm not. And so we're just going to celebrate the perfection of Jesus Christ. At some point, my, uh, my heart and my head should work itself out on the outside uh, of my life and would transform the things that I'm doing to reflect uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so this morning, I want us to just look at Three parts that I have in this place. Three parts that I have uh, in this place as we look at this last revolution piece. And that is that we want to change what we do with our hands. Or my part in this place. When I was in ninth grade, I went to a new high school and tried out for the baseball team. I think there was probably about 19... 20 guys that were able to make the baseball team and we tried out for a couple of different weeks went through practice and did different stuff and ran and stretched and hit baseballs and grounded ground balls and went out to the outfield and chased some fly balls out there and then the day came where we went into the gym up the stairs in the second story there where the weight room was and we all stood outside the coach's office and one after uh, another guys would go into the office they would get the good news or the bad news and they would leave either with a smile on their face or some of them were even crying uh, because they got cut and they weren't going to make the team I uh, remember just being a new guy in a new school I had only been there a few months and thinking there's no way that I'm ever going to get picked but for whatever reason they picked me uh, and I got to be on the team that first year I played baseball all four years uh, in high school, there was no freshman in JV or varsity, just a small uh, Christian school that I, that I went to, so it was just one, one team. But man, I was, I was an incredible contribution to that team my first year uh, because my job, my, my position was bench. I sat on the bench. I was the go boy, you know, hey, go grab that bag, go get those balls, go get the stuff off the bus. That was uh, sort of one of the things that was my job, that was my role uh, on the team. I did learn in three incredibly valuable 
life skills uh, my freshman year playing, playing, uh, playing baseball. First of all, I learned how to chew sunflower seeds, okay? Put them all over here, suck out the, you know, there's a system to that. You can't just go willy-nilly, you know, chewing sunflower seeds however you want. There's a way to do that. I learned that uh, when I was a freshman in high school. Uh, secondly, is I learned how to juggle uh, three baseballs, you know, and take them like this. And I had a lot of time on the bench during a lot of innings where I was not involved in anything that was going on in the field. And so I juggled, and I can juggle three baseballs. That's my, one of my claims to fame. I know you're impressed. Uh, the third thing, and if you ever want me to show you, I will, is you can take a, a, a hat, you know, your ball cap, and you turn it upside down and place the bill in your mouth. Have you ever seen this? And you can take, kind of put your, your lower jaw a little farther out, and you can go, like this, and you can flip it up on your head where it just sits like that. Good job, man. You were a freshman on baseball team, too. Uh, yeah, uh, that's exactly right. Uh, so I can, I mean, I can coach you on any of those three things. If you want to spend some time with me later, we can talk about that. You know, that year of baseball, I got up to the plate 12 times. My batting average, point zero nine seven. Okay, Albert Pujols, like 300, 330. I was like, uh, you know, two thirds below, you know, below that. Wait, I, I don't know. I, I probably got one hit out of twelve. I think that's what that means, uh, basically, or one and a half hit somehow. That was the way that worked. Uh, I got to go out in the field a couple of times, and I think you know they said, "Hey, go out in the right field," and I could see the coach. I thought they were having a prayer meeting during the fifth inning, but no, they they were. They were just, Lord, please don't let the ball get hit over there to that guy, you know. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> that was kind of my role on the team. And you could look into that role, that part, and say, you know, that's not that important. They could have done that. Or I could have said, you know, hey, forget this. I want to do something else in my time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go do this. Or I'm going to be a part of that. I'm going to play video games or, you know, whatever could have been done. But the truth is, is they stuck it out with me. Uh, I stuck it out with them. Uh, and before a couple years went by, somewhere in my sophomore year, I started playing a little more. And then somewhere in my junior year, I started. And then somewhere in my senior year, I you know, started again. And my senior year is one of the, the captains of the team. Our, our, we had like six seniors that were kind of together, and we went to the championship game our junior year and our senior year, and uh, we lost both times in the, in the championship game, which is another cry story for uh, another, another day as I reveal to you all my glory uh, days of high school here this morning. But here's, here's the point I'm trying to make is that even on the bench, I played an important role for the team and for the program. He said, well, how so? All you do over there is sucking on all the sunflower seeds. Like, how does that uh, play into it? And that's because this is that every team needs some freshmen that are learning, that are growing, that are improving, that can get the balls off the bus and bring them out to the field, uh, and, and that eventually will take over. If, if there aren't any freshmen learning and growing and getting used to it and getting some little experience, then when seniors graduate, juniors graduate, who's Who's going to take the place? So even on a bench, there's, a, there's an important role. Someone may look into the team and say, that guy never gets on the field. That guy never plays. He's not the, the cleanup hitter. What value is in that? I would just say there's, there's great value in that. Every person on the team, if they're a team player coming together, they have, a, they have a, a wonderful opportunity to influence the team, to influence the program. Uh, if, if you will. And that's one of the points that, uh, this is really where we're getting at, where Paul speaks uh, to us here. He says, look, God loves you. And so present your body a living sacrifice to you. Change the way that you think, not wired the way the world is wired, but wired according to the Bible, according to truth. And as we do that, he says, God's grace that is poured in our life, we're going to do something differently uh, with our life. He's, I'm, I'm sharing you with this incredible thought that you have some grace that God has given you. He's, he's, he didn't cut you, okay? He said, hey, you're on the team. Team is called City Light Baptist Church. He says, hey, you got a position, you got a role, you got a gift, you got a, a connection to this team. There's a part that you play on this team. And that every part, every role uh, is important. And I want to just look at this real quickly. Three parts of my place. Number one is this is our attitude. In verse 3, he just says, through the grace given to me as an apostle, he says, I, I want to say to every man that's among you, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. But think soberly according to, the, to, to God, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. 
He says, hey, I want you to think soberly about what has happened here. When you got saved, God poured His Holy Spirit's power into your life, giving you a spiritual gift, giving you a gift that is to be part of uh, the body, part of the family, part of the team, and it's valuable, it's important, it's necessary, it's essential to the success of the team uh, as a whole. But he says here, don't think more highly than you ought to think. You know, a lot of times when we uh, have a gift, when we have a talent, when we have an ability, something that God has given to us, we are tempted, if we're not careful, to think, uh, man, I'm somebody. I do this. I have this. I've had this experience in my life. I have all this wisdom. I have all this stuff. And I'm going to, I'm going to grace these small people with using my talents on them. Okay? That's kind of, that can be the tendency. If you've been in church long enough, you've seen somebody like that. But you know, the other thing that soberly indicates is it's not just about thinking more of ourselves. And I, you know, the truth is, I, I said this in the first service, I think it's still true in the second service. I think at City Light Baptist Church, the problem is not. Well, there could be occasionally people that think more of themselves than they should. I think a lot of times the, the challenge is that people think less of themselves than they should. And I'm not talking about self-esteem issues. I'm talking about something like this, is that you don't realize that God has gifted you, graced you with a supernatural gift and power to connect into this body and this team to be a part, to play a role, to learn, to grow, to do something now and something a little bit later and something in the future. And by you kind of undermining that or just saying, no, it's not that big a deal or I'm not important or I don't have to be there, it's not a, like you hurt the team. And, 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 and maybe even more important than hurting the team uh, is, is, that we, uh, is that we spit on the gift that God has given to us. And so what Paul is saying in verse 3 is, first of all, don't steal the gift from God. Don't just say, man, I am, God, I, am, I am a God's gift to this church. I am so talented in this area. I am so well-versed and experienced in this area. I mean, everybody should just be fawning all over me and listening to me. I am amazing. Okay? Don't steal it from God. If, if, it was, if you have anything, the Bible says it's by the grace of God. Okay? We don't, it's not about us. But also, my friend, don't spit on it either. You have a gift. You have an ability. You have something from the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you that I don't have. But you know what? I need it. You have something inside of you from the Holy Spirit of God that your city group does not have. All the other people in here. But they need it. And you hold on to it. You possess it. And so attitude is so very important that we don't think highly of ourselves, but also we don't think too lowly of ourselves. Don't spit on it. Here's what the Bible says. Think soberly about it. Be, be honest about it. Be real about it. you got a gift. Use it. you got a gift. Serve with it. You're a living sacrifice. It's, it's not your body. It's not your thinking. It's not your mind. It's not your will. It's, it's God's. And, and we're glad that it is because that's the way that it works out best uh, in our life. But let's change our attitude about what's going on inside here. I possess a spiritual gift from God that He desires for me to use in the context of my church because my church needs me. Number two, I want to just consider this word anatomy. In verse 4, the Bible says, there, we have many members in one body. And all members have not the same office. We all have different gifts or different abilities, different levels of those different abilities. So, being many, we are one body in Christ. We call it City Light Baptist Church. And then it says, every one members one of another. Is that we're all connected together. 1 Corinthians 12, I'm not going to go there uh, for a whole lot. That may throw the verse up on the screen, but you can look at that whole passage uh, starting there uh, in verse 14. But it talks about how that we're one body, many members. The foot can't say to the eyes, I don't need you. Uh, the mouth can't say to the nose, I don't need you. Like they're all together. They're all part. Every place, every position is valuable and is important. Oh, man, I thought someone stole my stuff. I have something I want to show you. I made a very important purchase this morning at Walmart. Uh, this is a body, a potato body. Uh, it has an ear, it has a tongue, it has an arm. 
Do we see any problems with this? How is it going to, yeah, is it, it's, not, it's not cut into french fries yet. That's the problem. No, uh, it's not going to operate well as a body. It's not going to be hard to handle some things. Can't see where it's going. Can only hear half as good. You know, this, uh, this is a little preacher joke here for you. This is, you know what church this is? This is the Corinthian church. They all wanted to speak in tongues. And uh, you see the problem that would be if that's all everybody had? No, it's a desire better gifts, other gifts. You know, we've got to have other people doing other things. We need an arm. The tongue can't say the arm. I don't need you. I'm just, I got my tongue. Well, then you'd be a weird looking body that really couldn't do what it's supposed to do. And that is really the picture or the image that Jesus is giving to us in the scripture is that we're all many members, but we're one body. So the hand can't say to the foot, I don't need you. And the head, the eyes can't say to the ear, I don't need you. So it's so important that we understand the anatomy of the picture that God is after. And I think if we did, it might help us with our attitude a little bit more to say, hey, it's not about me. God's given me this gift. And I'm not going to spit on it anymore and think that it's not a big deal. Or think that I'm not valuable or not important or that I don't have to be there or be a part or be connected because when the arm isn't there the body suffers and so does the arm you see this is the correct way that mr david is supposed to look with all of his stuff in place uh, and even has some spare parts somewhere uh, that you can get to if you need to but uh here's here's the thing is that's the body that'll operate correctly that's a body that'll work that's a body that can do something that could, we would say it this way, that could shine and be Jesus on display in our everyday lives because that would be a group of people that have the right attitude and they understand the anatomy in which uh, God has assembled the church. It's not about a personality. It, it should never, you should never think, hey, I don't need to serve. I don't need to change the way I use my hands because... Uh, you know, I know Matt's there preaching today, and that'll be fine. That's, that's one piece. That's one member. That's one part of this body. And, and understand, I want you to be very clear, it's, it's a, it goes a lot farther than just coming to church on Sunday morning and, and sitting down in this room. It's about the whole thing and about being involved in all uh, of what God, uh, what we call City Light Baptist Church. Number three, I want you to see the actions. In verse 6, he says, so we have gifts that differ according to the grace that God has given us. So, if you're a prophet, prophesy according to the portion of faith that God's given you. I mean, hey, someone's going to be better at it. Someone's going to be less at it. There's not just one prophet in the church. There's a, there's a number of people that speak the truth, see the truth, uh, and can encourage people in the truth. If, if, if you got it, use it, okay? Uh, and number seven, ministry. You have the gift of ministry and serving, of helping. Uh, then wait on your ministry and do it. Uh, he that teaches, teach. The ones that exhort and encourage and inspire and breathe life into it, go for it. Do it. The ones that give, the givers, the God. Look, you understand that all of these things, whether it's giving, teaching, prophecy, like God, we're all to be doing these things. It's not like, well, I don't have the gift of giving, so I don't give in the offering. No, like, look, we're all supposed to be doing all the things. But then God reaches down and he gifts people in certain areas with more ability and more natural talent, if you will, more supernatural talent or the opportunities to express these gifts more uh, and more effectively, if we can maybe say it like that. So if you exhort, exhort. If you give, give. If you rule or ministrate, organize, do it with diligence. Uh, and if it's the gift of mercy, then use it and show mercy uh, and do it with cheerfulness. And so, again, I stress that this is not about just saying, hey, God loves me. I'm so good. For, I'm so glad for that. I'm, I, Jesus is perfect. I'm not. So just, just let's thank Jesus today that he's awesome. That's part of Christianity. But the other part is this, is that that awesome Jesus loved me, saved me, poured grace into my life, gave me a gift that is to be connected to my body, the church, in a way that helps. And you say, well, I don't even know my gift, or I don't know that list. It's kind of complicated. Uh, a few months ago when we preached on the Holy Spirit, and we talked about spiritual gifts. We really kind of boiled it down to this, and I think we're still there in this thought. 
uh, as, as this, is that spiritual gifts is grace that God gives me so that I can strengthen the faith of other people or I can grow the faith, begin the faith uh, of, of people who aren't, aren't saved. And so don't overcomplicate this with, am I a prophet? Am I a teacher? Am I a giver? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think it would be best to just start in a place where we look around at people in our church. We look around at people in our lives. We look around at people in our city group and we say, hey, they need encouragement in their faith. How can I encourage them? If it's the bake a casserole, the bake the casserole. If it's to share the verse, then share the verse. If it's to give in the offering, then, then, then give it to the cause. But we use what God has given to us to strengthen the faith of others. Now, there are thousands of ways that we as a church uh, could do good things for each other and for our community. The list is endless. You can Google different ministries and ideas and things that churches do. Uh, I, I've seen some even this week of different churches, friends of ours. We went to a conference a couple weeks ago, Idea Day, uh, and, and people share ideas about what they're doing in the church. I think, man, that's great. Oh, that's cool. That'd be awesome. That'd be fun to do. Oh, man, I wish I lived in Hawaii. Then we could give out lays like with every uh, you know, guest, you know, that sort of, th- sort of thing. Uh, you understand there are thousands of ways in which We can shine for the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I believe there's the ways that God uh, wants our church, our body to do it. Uh, And not only just to do it like for the rest of time, but hey, this is where we're at right now in our church. This is where we've been growing and this is where we're headed. And this is really what we're focused on enhancing or improving or continuing uh, or maybe starting in this year. And so as we've met with our leaders and uh, Nathan and I have worked through a lot of, a lot of these things. Uh, we really kind of boiled down to four major focuses. Uh, foci, how do we say that? Uh, foci, that sounds more impressive uh, if that's the plural of focuses. Um, but really four areas in which I believe need our attention. But they don't only just need uh, the attention of the ear or of the tongue. They really need the attention of the entire body. They're, 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 I think each of these things are at a place where they're good, they're great, they're, they're kind of going well, but the truth is, is that what really would take it to the next level, or help it to improve, or help it to be what it needs to be, is by the whole body recognizing, hey, I got a part in that. Hey, I'm an important role in that. God's given me a part to this puzzle that no one else has. I'm the piece that's missing. And so how can I change uh, my part in, in this place, and, and, wh- and wh- where are we headed this year? What are we looking at? Uh, and so over the next 20 minutes or so, uh, Nathan's going to come up here, my wife's going to come up here in a minute, and we're going to talk about some of those areas uh, for our Vision Sunday and for 2020. Go ahead. All right. So everybody, have you had a chance to get your bag out yet? Let's do that now, okay? If you don't, did anybody not get one of these when you came in? We need to make sure that everybody in the room has an orange bag. If you didn't get one, Just put your hand up. We'll make sure that you get one. All right, we need a couple over here. Um, And our ushers ushers will come and get you one of those. But there's a couple things in this bag. Before we get into those those main foci, I like that. The foci of our church. I think, is that even a word? I don't know. I think it is now. (laughs) It is now. But uh, you should, the main thing in your bag, aside from the chocolates, put those aside for a little bit. Um, is this binder right here. Now, this binder is meant for you to keep um, in the weeks that you come to church. This is a great place, uh, and the purpose of this is to keep your sermon notes in here, okay? So keep this with you. There's a sticker in the bag. You can stick it anywhere you want. I chose the bottom corner like that. Um, You don't have to do it just like me. You can put it on the inside. You can stick it on the back of the person in front of you, however you want to do that. Um, But that's there for you to put on your binder. Uh, But this is for your sermon notes. If you put it on your binder... Put it very lightly, make sure you got it straight, and then oh. press down. Because if you press down hard first, that's it. Yeah, like those, this is one of those you only get one chance. life I, decisions. I tried that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's going to last sure. for the rest of the year, yeah. so you better get yeah. it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Very important that you, the <laughs> sticker placement is probably the most important thing from today. Well, that and trade sure. to Mr. Goodbar. <laughs> right. Um, but this is for sermon notes, so keep that with you. Bring it uh, every week, and... Uh, Put your sermon notes in there. But before we get into the information, I want you to turn to the last page of the book. Okay? Now, in school, the last page is always the answer key. So I know some of you are very good at turning to that last page, um, especially if you're homeschooled, right? Um, (laughs) But uh, anyways. April. April. Um, This is the City Light t-shirt for this year. Yeah. Woo! All right? It is nice. It's great. 
And so today, you can sign up uh, to, to get one of these t-shirts. We're asking uh, everyone, if you want a t-shirt, they're $5 a piece, um, and we're going to put an order in this week by Wednesday. So you have a couple days to think about it, but I wouldn't think about it any more than right now. You need one of these t-shirts, all right? <laughs> $5, you can uh, sign up for these uh, at the guest services counter on your way out today. Uh, you can order one or two or ten, uh, whatever. In um, there, there are extra smalls, but there are no kids. These are, I'm yeah. sorry, that's extra small through, uh, through whatever adult sizes go through. So, but they're not kids' shirts, I'm sorry. Um, but you could probably put your kid in an extra small, um, even the baby. I'm not you, know, you might lose the baby, <laughs> but anyways, um, so they're not kids' sizes. But the great thing about these is they're only $5. It's a great deal for a T-shirt. Um, the other thing is, and we're going to talk in a minute about our, our house party. That's one of the things we'll talk about this morning. But uh, remember the, the St. Louis Homeless Church we're, we're bringing socks and things for. Um, if you would like to give someone uh, downtown uh, at that, that homeless church a City Light t-shirt, uh, if you want to give $2.50 in addition to the one you're ordering for yourself, we'll make sure that someone downtown gets a City Light shirt. I think that'd be a real encouragement to them. Um, it'd be nice if we could do socks next year, like matching socks, but <laughs> I think that, um, that that's a great way uh, just to encourage that's someone and to, to give them a, a, a nice T-shirt as well. So that's an option for you. Um, order yours for $5. If you want to give an additional $250, we will make sure that, uh, that someone downtown gets one of those. Okay, so with that aside, let's talk about our, our main focuses for the year. Foci, foci, foci for the year, all right? Um, how many of you are just loving your city group? All right. How many of you are not? No. Oh, let's not do that. Okay. If you are not part of a city group, you need to be. Our city groups are the foci <laughs> of, um, we're going to donate a dollar every time. No. Every time we say that word. No. <laughs> but uh, the city groups are the, the focus of City Light. And we launched those last August. Um, and it's just been, been great to see how God is putting those together and how they're growing in, in community and mission. Uh, but this year, that's still a main focus here at City Light, and there are uh, a few areas that we need to grow in within our city group. So if you're taking notes, I want you to write these things down because of um, our city groups this year. First of all, can, um, I, shared, yes. can I say one thing quickly as you're getting your pen Maybe. ready? That this, is, this has always been the focus of our city groups, yeah. but we just want to continue to emphasize what they are and what they should be because they sort of are becoming this. We have transitioned from basically a Bible study uh, into something that would be more precisely identified as a, what would be theologically as a missional life group. It means a group of people on mission for Christ. Um, and what does that mean exactly? He's getting ready to kind of give you the definition of the different parts to that. Uh, and it's something that we're praying for our groups to become and to continue to grow into to grow in our walk with the Lord and with each other and, and with our community. And so that's kind of the nature of this depth of these definitions. Yeah, here for that. that's that's a good point. So when you say gospel centered city groups, this is, this has always been the focus. Um, but we need to keep reiterating it because city groups are still a fairly, uh, fairly new thing um, here at City Light. But really, the, the areas of focus that we have with our city groups is number one, um, shared <clears throat> leadership within the group. Um, some of our groups have already done this, but we're working our way towards Having, uh, having leaders within the group that are helping city group leaders. It, I mean, it's, it's a lot of work being a city group leader. There's a lot, of, a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of things. There's life that you're still, you, you know, your work life and things. Um, so there's, there's areas that in your city group that are available uh, for you to serve in, in leadership positions. Uh, you might not want to be the city group leader yep. yet or ever, uh, but the truth is, is, is there are three different places where you could say, hey, I want to be, it's in a, sen in, a, in a sense like an assistant to help out in a different area to continue to develop what your city group is. Uh, and so we won't necessarily say, here's what all three of those are today in this, in this time, but your city group leader knows, and we'll continue to uh, kind of talk about that, encourage them in that, because one of the goals for the groups uh, by the end of the semester is that those positions are filled, so to speak, uh, and, and we have people that are acting in those, in those ways of leadership in, in your group. Yeah, and, and I'm sure you've heard, heard something. If you haven't heard that from your city group leader, then you need to talk to Josh. Where's, is Josh in here? Josh is our city group director. <laughs> uh, you can tell on your city group leader if they wow. haven't told you about these three, three opportunities to serve. Anyway, so that's the first, uh, the, the first emphasis is shared leadership within the groups. We want to see those leadership roles filled within your city group. 
um, to, to help with the, the community and the mission um, of a city group. Secondly, authentic celebration of God's work in members' life. I, you know, w- there's this awkwardness sometimes when you come together for, for uh, an up night, for instance, and um, the city group leader says, hey, uh, does anybody have a testimony of, of how God's working in your life? And what, what happens normally? This is what happens. It goes like this. Yeah, I like that. That was a little too active sometimes. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you ever had that moment in your city group where no one knows what to say? Yeah. It happens from time to time. I know it happens in church growing up all my life. Yeah. And but but imagine, I mean, imagine when you come together, uh, man, God is, God is working your life throughout the week, and, and God is teaching you things as you're studying his word. And as we come together as a city group, we're celebrating uh, what God is doing uh, in each other's lives. And, and there just needs to be the freedom there to do that. And so we're, we want to emphasize that point that there needs to be a freedom for authentic celebration. So one of, one of the reasons there's some silence sometimes is because uh, people aren't aware of what God is doing in their life. Like we haven't learned the skill, if you will, of recognizing God's hand in these everyday things in my life. And so part of developing that, and as our city group leaders will continue to help us learn this, is to help pull those out of us a little bit. Uh, but then as, as they show them from their lives, and we can kind of learn, oh, I, I, God's done that for me. I want to I share that. God's did this. This is, this is great. Or God taught me this. Uh, one of the other er- reasons, too, though, is that because maybe we don't actually walk with God throughout the week. Like, the only time we, like, think about the Bible or think about Christian spiritual things is, like, when we go to our city group or when we come to church on Sunday morning. Uh, and one of the very core, the first core value of our church is that we believe in walking with our Savior. Uh, if, if we talked about this this week in staff meeting, that if people in our church don't walk with our Savior, it's, they're, they're just missing out on so much the, the way that our church is set up to help with that and increase that. Uh, and so we, we've put together this little tool. We know we've talked about the SOAP method of studying the Bible before. If you don't know what that means, come talk to me. I can explain it in depth to you again. But I just kind of put this little booklet together that may help you. It gives a little, there's a scripture reading schedule there for a month, uh, each day a few verses. And then you can go through a day and write the scripture down, whatever the reference is. Write the observations that you see. This guy killed that guy. That, this says to love him, whatever you know, the observations would be. How that applies to your life. Maybe that was a bad example to use uh, to follow it up with application. Don't kill anybody this week. Uh, and, then, uh, and then pray. Uh, pray that my wife doesn't kill me uh, like this guy did uh, in, the, in the Bible. Um, and then a few other pages that you'll, you'll see through there on the, on the weekends and stuff like that. Um, and so, again, this is just a tool to help you get into the Bible so that you can get to know God uh, and grow in your relationship with Him. If you have a better tool, use that tool. But if you don't have a tool, then I like my tool better than your tool. And I want to encourage you to use my tool until you get your own tool. Uh, or just keep using this one. That's why we, that's why we made it uh, for you. And so I want to encourage you. Here, here's the thing. So... If this week I write these things down, I read Ephesians 1, uh, the first few verses, and I see some things about God that impress me or that the Holy Spirit says to me, hey, this is important, this is awesome, and I write it down. Then when I go to my city group on Thursday and they say, hey, what has God been teaching you in the Word this week? What has God been doing in your life? You don't go, I hope someone says something soon. Uh, You can go, oh, wait, wait, wait. You know, back on Tuesday, I read this verse. Here's the, you know, here's the verse, and man, this was just so encouraging. Or this, I never thought about this before. Or somebody answered this for me. I don't know what this means. Uh, and someone in your group can be, can be a help like that. So that part in your city group may be a little quiet. And we're hoping that this year uh, it will grow in volume, uh, that more people will contribute to that celebration time and on the, those up nights in your city group uh, by walking with God. And if this tool can help you, that's awesome. We hope that it will. Yeah, and, th- and the next thing that does, and you kind of hit on it there, is um, really the next thing we want to see is open accountability where we're bearing one another's burdens within our group and we're praying for each other and we're, we're, uh, we're encouraging one another in the faith. Um, and that's another, another thing that that will bring as people are walking with their Savior is open accountability to pray for one another and bear each other's burdens. Um, within the city group model. Um, the next thing would be dynamic outreach. We're really, uh, really looking for our city groups to, uh, to be reaching out to communities. And, and we've set a goal, and this is a pretty, pretty uh, attainable goal. But um, we, right now we have seven city groups throughout our, our community. Uh, we would like to see by, by 2025, that's five years, um, 
we want to see tw 25, 25 city groups throughout our, our community. Four um, years and Four and years and nine, months. yeah, oh, what's not, five years. <laughs> uh, but by 2025, we want to see 25 city groups uh, throughout this area that are impacting our community with the gospel, that are growing together in community um, as a group. And, and it's a very attainable goal. So what we'd like you to do is you can rip out, oh, man, Pam, I'm sorry. I ripped, there's a hole right through my face, so that's probably a better thing. But uh, you can tear this out. And if you're not a part of a city group yet, there's seven groups there. You can sign up to become a part of one. If you're interested down the road in becoming a city group leader and starting a group within uh, your, your neighborhood or in your community, um, show your interest on that form. And at the end of the service, we'll have a, a chance for you to, to be able to turn these in, and we'll be in contact with you uh, about next steps on that. So um, the last thing for city groups, and it goes right into our next major focus of this year, uh, would be organic discipleship. Do you want to talk about that, Matt? Yeah, you can turn your page to that um, page where it's, it talks about spiritual life coaching. And you can see a little bit about that next Sunday night at 5 o'clock. Uh, for those interested, uh, we're going to meet right in this room and, be, and kick off our spiritual life coaching for 2020. Uh, maybe you've already been through this material and you would like to help someone go through it. Uh, we'd like to hear from you on the next page. There's a little registration form. Say, hey, I, I'm a coach. I'd like, you know, I've been through it. I'd like to coach. Uh, hook me up with somebody. And we're going we're gonna to kind of do that. Uh, maybe you're like, man, I would love to be a coach. Like I, I've been at church a long time and I, 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 I know a lot of things about the Bible, but uh, to like just start off teaching someone or help someone like, I don't know, but I'd like to maybe go through it sometime with somebody else with the mindset that I'm going to be a coach. And that kind of helped me to learn maybe a little differently. Or you're just new here, you know, new to Christianity, new to church, or never really been taught some of the foundational truths of what it means to be a Christian and what the Bible teaches and how to walk with God. Uh, and you say, I could use some help. I could use some help. And, and on that forum, you can sign up to say, I want to be a part of this. Here's how it will work is next Sunday night, we're just going to meet one time and kind of have a kickoff, connect you with your person, get going and that, and then, and then let you guys take it from there. Uh, for the next number of weeks. I think there's 10 weeks in this material. We're kind of given about 15 weeks to finish it up. So if you miss a week or something comes up and you can't meet, give some flexibility there. And then 15 weeks from next Sunday, whatever that is, uh, we're going to meet back here on a Sunday night kind of as a celebration. Hey, we finished. Great job. We did it. This is great. What did you learn? Uh, but then also, uh, as with sort of like a dual purpose in that we're going to celebrate finishing uh, but then we're also going to kick it off again. So the idea uh, would be is that when I get through this, that I, and I, think, I think one of the things the material emphasizes is that it's not just about me learning and now I'm done, but it's as a Christian, as I follow Jesus, uh, the real idea is that I'm a disciple who's making disciples. And so I'd see someone else in my church, in my city group, in my life that would want to follow Jesus with me, and then it'd be my turn to coach, it'd be my turn to lead, or you know, just to be a coach the rest of your life uh, and to be helping as many people as you can uh, to establish their faith uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so next Sunday, we're going to kind of kick that off. If that's something you're interested, even if you're like, I've got some questions about that. I'm a little nervous about that. Now, this is something we've been doing for a while in our church, but it's really been on the church side and, and not on the city group side, if I can say it like that, where someone's come to us and we say, OK, let me find you someone. And you can meet with the, somebody on the staff or someone over here. Uh, but really where we want to get to is, is that we'd see this in our, in our city groups more than on the church side. And that's because that's where the deeper, more connected relationships are happening. That's where you've invited someone in your group and they're there. And you're getting to know them and, and you, uh, you sense what their spiritual needs are. And you say, hey, has anybody ever you know, done this with you? Like, let's meet together uh, and, do this, and do this coaching thing. Uh, and help kind of get you caught up to speed uh, on some of the things that the Bible uh, has going on and things that are going on in our church. So that's the idea with that second thing of the spiritual life coach. Yeah, so you don't need to know all the, all the answers for all that yet, but if you're interested, um, there's that form in your, in your uh, booklet there to be either be a coach or to, be a, uh, uh, to register to participate in it. So that's something to think about. Um, I'm going to ask Jenny to come up at this time, uh, and we'll kind of move into the next page there. Um, Matt and Jenny will do that, and I will leave the stage. Thank you. Yeah. Goodbye. You are the weakest link. That was a no, great segue. Um, towards the end there, there's a page that's called Love Focused Counseling. Um, 
we'll, it'll probably end up with a different name by the end of the year as we're kind of working on some things for this. But um, in our preaching this year, in our teaching through the different Bible studies, uh, different, some things that we're working on to put online, even some additional content, if you will, that will be a, a help to our church. Um, the theme of our year is this, is, to, is gospel-centered. And the subtitle of that is Salvation from My Everyday Life. We understand salvation in the past, Jesus saved me from my sins. We understand salvation in the future, that one day I'm going to go to heaven. But the Bible also talks about this third aspect of salvation, and that is that I am being saved today. What does that mean exactly? Uh, and it's our desire. God has been teaching us some things and growing us in some areas uh, where we've kind of taken some things and kind of mashed them together uh, to make uh, a simple model that we want to uh, teach and instruct and train and help people uh, to use, not just for, man, my preacher sounds awesome, okay, uh, but really something super practical where you can take it home and you can use it in your life to see victory over sin and then use it uh, in other, and to help other people, encourage other people and strengthen their faith. Do you want to say anything? No, wrong question. Say something about that. I know you want to say something. <laughs> She's got the mic. Well, um, this is something that the Lord has been doing in our hearts. Um, really, there's only two kinds of churches or two kinds of preaching, and that is get better or just like get fixed, fix yourself, um, or gospel. And so the Lord has really been transforming our minds on a lot of things and helping us to see something that was there the whole time. So no offense, but every one of you has problems. <laughs> you all have problems. Do you have and problems? And it would be really great if uh, we've talked about this. We're like, wouldn't it be so great if like 50 people knew how to process their issues through the gospel, could identify what their one core issue is, and then they could see to the solution? Wouldn't that be incredible? And wouldn't it be so great if you could get past processing your own issues to a place where all the people that you know in your life that have issues, and you all know people who have issues, <laughs> where you felt equipped to help them. And the term counseling is so intimidating because you think, oh, I'm not, uh, I'm not a counselor. Oh, wow, that does, I'm really sorry about your life. And that sounds really complex. Um, and then we just are intimidated sort of into a place of being like, mm, I'll bring you a coffee. And we don't know how to help them. And so we want to equip you to know how to help them and to sort of build up your confidence in that way. That's what this is. Um, just so you know that, like, every time you come into the building, that's like the, 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 the conspiracy. <laughs> like, that's what we're trying to do <laughs> is to teach you how to identify your core issues and then lead you to the solution. And also in that, equipping you to help other people. So we'll be doing that through Ladies Bible Study. It'll be more of the same. We started doing that last year. Um, and did you start talking about some of the mechanics of that? Yeah, so on the next page there, you'll see this. Uh, it says on here, uh, love focus counseling. I want to receive training, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that little paragraph, you can read it later. But there's four boxes there that are ways that we're going to kind of do that. One or one way that you do that is by attending the teaching, preaching services uh, this year. So on Sunday morning as we get together and share what's going on here, every my, my heart's desire is really to lay a foundation for this over the next couple months uh, and then it just to take for the rest of the year different issues, practical areas like our uh, like parenting or marriage or people at my work, annoying people at my work or uh, my money, uh, my spare time, you know, like all the different things in our life and see how Jesus saves us uh, from an everyday existence in these things and has given us something more to live for. Uh, in, in, in our life and, and to see how that Jesus Christ through the good news of the gospel is that solution. It's not you being better, you being more disciplined or you going to a new church or you, but it's, it's Jesus Christ that is the all-sufficient one that can help uh, equip you uh, to do that. And so I'd say just attend as many services as you can. Which ones are important? They're all important and they'll all have a, a little piece in kind of laying that foundation and getting to interact with the truth and see how it kind of fits in and getting very familiar uh, with it. And so I'm gonna, I want to encourage this. If you, if you serve in a ministry, we have an awesome setup right now where there's two services. So you can serve in a ministry, and then you can go to the service. You never have to skip a service on a Sunday morning unless 
We have a one service Sunday. Uh, and so just make it a priority uh, that, hey, I'm going to be here uh, and get as much of that as I can. I understand sometimes we can't be, uh, but let's do our uh, part in that. Then number two uh, is we want to encourage you to read the book Love Focused. And it's, uh, um, we, the reason is because a lot of the information that we're going to share, there's some foundational things in there uh, that will help us sort of speak some of the same language. Uh, and then number two, three is to attend the Love Focus Conference at City Light. It's going to be May 8, 9, and 10, uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, uh, and, then, uh, and then Sunday. The, the authors of this book will actually be here with us for that weekend. Uh, and they'll be leading that conference for us, and then he'll be preaching for us on Sunday morning. Uh, and so, again, it's a few months away, but just kind of square your calendar away. Uh, it, is, it is Mother's Day weekend, um, and so uh, we, we felt like it was an okay time. There's not a lot of like, hey, we're going out of town for Mother's Day. If you are, have fun. Uh, we're gonna, we'll be here. Uh, but uh, that's the, the week that worked out uh, for that. Uh, but um, Friday night, Saturday morning kind of thing. Uh, and that's going to be a big help to you. We got to meet the authors a couple weeks ago, and they've been a big blessing in our life. Did you so if you're, if you're looking at this and you're like, well, I want to do that. I want to know how to help myself with my problems and then help other people. Um, come to church. Pay attention. Order the book Love Focused. You can get it on lovefocus.com for just $10 if you enter the code LOVE. So it's cheaper than if you get it on Amazon Prime, but you can get it on Amazon Prime. Read the book. Um, at any time, if you, this is sort of optional, but if you, women, if you read it, um, read it, and then I'll connect with you, and we'll talk through it, and I'll kind of help you to see sort of my simplified thing in my brain for this. And then, uh, and then we're going to have this conference, and then this meet with the love, then we're going to give you something to go on your refrigerator that's going <laughs> to say, now you can help people, and then you can start helping people. <laughs> And so that's what that is. And she wasn't really insulting your intelligence when she presented it like that. No, I'm kidding. No. Come to church. Yeah. No, that's good. No, um, I mean, but, but when you look at that, you're like, well, because it seems like an extra thing on top of the life coaching. Right. And don't be intimidated by thinking, oh, man, it's another time thing. So for, for um, instance, like I, kind of already built in. I met with a couple of people this week, and we talked through this very thing. And yeah. uh, you like, don't know what to do right now. I'll stand you feel there. done, but you're not quite done. Um, we talked through this. I went to Chick-fil-A with someone. We took the paper tray thing off the tray and we sat down and we kind of drew it out and talked through it uh, in an hour or so. Uh, and it was without reading the book, without kind of grasping all the, I was like, man, this is really helpful uh, to where I'm at and helping other people uh, in, in my life. And so, again, what, what I'm so excited about is it takes, it, 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 there's so much truth to this, is that it takes this incredibly thick, and sometimes overwhelming, complicated Bible, and it's going to take it and boil it down to like the back of a napkin in a way that you can look at the things that are broken in your world and in the world of other people and actually have an, a, an answer, a solution for them. Uh, now, they still have to exercise faith uh, and live that out in their life, but it really does take it and bring it down to a place where it can be actionable and used in our everyday life, and it's, super, it's just super simple and super helpful uh, and so we want to meet the, as, as we go through that process. Someone says, hey, I've read the book. I'd like to talk to you. Uh, see how I, I want to see me. I want to see you use it on yourself. Uh, and then we'll kind of do a case study, if you will. Here's a person named Jenny, let's say, that has the issue of, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, and I help her uh, with her issue as well. And, and just to sort of as a word of testimony, that makes it sound like we have it all figured out. So just write it, the whole Bible down in the back of the <laughs> And we don't. And even this week, I was wrestling with some things. The Lord is just such a faithful counselor to me and is teaching me more layers and more aspects of the gospel. I was sharing the gospel when I was in sixth grade. I could have shared the Romans road. But then the Lord has totally opened my, my mind to how the gospel helps me with my, when I want to poke my eyeballs out because I'm so mad at my kids. You know, very practical things <laughs> in my life. So we don't have it all figured out, and I'm excited because we're going to learn and grow through this with you this year. Yeah. That's just our no. heart. There's a reason why we're coming to church. There's a method to the madness, and that's what's happening. Very good. Thank you. You can take that. We really need to work on our segues. Here we Here go. You go. <laughs> just one more area. We want to switch back to the page that just says the big day outreach. Um, this year, there are two major outreaches that we have. One's coming up in a few weeks for our house party, the party with a purpose. Um, you've seen those invites out. You've probably gotten an email or two or some things that are going on. 
want to encourage you in this. Uh, jump in and be a part of that. We have a team of people that are kind of helping put that day together. If you're not part of that team, there's certainly a place for you to help. If you, uh, We'd encourage you to do that. But I think the greatest way that you can help uh, is this, is, is be inviting people to come and participate uh, in that day. Yeah, we're going to have a worship service. Uh, I'm going to start a new series that day that I think will be super helpful uh, to people to understand what Jesus has done for them. It's called, uh, it, it, the idea is hope or hype. Uh, does Jesus really make a difference in my life? Uh, and we're going to talk about how Jesus makes a difference in our past, our present, and our future over the three weeks that we have that series. Um, we're having this a good cause, if you will, of the purpose of donating socks. We encourage you guys to bring socks uh, that day. And, and I've talked to some people. They don't even go to our church this week. Invited them. Say, hey, bring a pack of socks and come. Uh, one guy I talked to this week, he said, man, he goes, I, he goes, this is incredible. He goes, my grandpa was homeless. Uh, he goes, I just have a, such a burden to help. And I, I, he goes, I will be there. You know, I'm coming with some socks. I, I want to be there. I want to be a part of this. Uh, and so I think sometimes, especially where we live, that to provide even opportunities to help uh, people like that or to serve is something that maybe our community isn't, there, there's not a plethora of those opportunities. We've kind of isolated ourselves sometimes from that on this side of the river uh, and so to provide those opportunities could even encourage people who may not even normally be interested uh, in church or what's going on to say hey that's neat that your people would care about that that you guys would be involved with that I want to I want to help with that uh, and so that maybe even through just wanting to help with a good cause uh, they can get to meet some of us get to meet you know, our church be a part of a service and see uh, that we're not as weird as they think we are. Uh, and then maybe they would even like to stay and hang out for a few years uh, or a lifetime with us. And so uh, this is a special, important day, uh, not because of all the activities, but because of the outreach opportunity to bring people in to see our church, be a part of experience that, but then also as we are, uh, have this purpose of, of helping out in this other ministry over in St. Louis. And so Again, the biggest thing you can do is invite. You say, who should I invite? I would invite everybody. That's who I would invite. Uh, and, but I, don't just really limit it. If you say, I'm just going to invite this one person. Uh, you know, they may not be able to come or you know, something may come up. I, I really want to encourage you this time around. Uh, next, in the fall, we're going to do something that really centers around like one person. But this time around, I just want to invite as many people as you can uh, to come. I stuck them in the tubes at the bank, you know, sent them back and said, hey, this is for you. I want you to come to my church. I don't even know her name, you know, uh, and or talk to people that you do know. Uh, but just be inviting people to come. Someone asked me, what if they have a church? What do I do if they already have a church? Well, yeah, they say, wait, we're not we're not here to steal you from your church. You know, that's not the point. But this is what we're doing. If you don't have a church, man, we'd love for you to come. Uh, and be a part of that. And in the fall, we'll have something like our fall festival or friend day, something like that, um, that will be coming. Uh, and again, this is, it, it, I, w- I want you to see that this isn't like, uh, you know your pastor is really keyed up on sharing the gospel and on getting people, seeing people saved and new, new Christians coming in. At the same time, don't get delusional <laughs> in the fact, that, man, that's what we're always doing. I want you to see here, in our church calendar, there, are, like while we'd invite anybody to come any Sunday, there's these two major rally points that uh, you might get tired of hearing us talking about it. But it's super vital uh, to the people that we're connecting with and then to the, to the lifeblood of our church. Wouldn't it be amazing in your city group to have three or four new Christians that got saved in the house party Sunday to say, man, I want to get in a city group. And now you have these new Christians that are coming into your group. And it sort of like breathes life and purpose and joy and meaning uh, into this thing that I already love doing. Uh, but now there's some new fresh meat, if you will. There's some new fresh uh, opportunities to invest in people and to make an eternal difference. And so we kind of rally around these two key points. Uh, but please make it a point to be here. Kind of clear the calendar on those dates uh, and make it a point to be here and then be involved, especially uh, in the area of inviting people uh, to come. So as we, uh, I did look it up while we, while you were talking, and it says that you can use foci uh, or focuses, wh- whatever you'd like, is the both, both are the correct answer. So we have solved the mystery by the end uh, of our time together. Um, as we get ready to close, I want to go back to Romans chapter 12 for just a second, if I can find my notes here, uh, as we've got a thousand different pieces of paper that have flown around up here, and now I can't find the words that I was going to say. So give me a second to see if I can. I'm coming. (laughs) Oh, boy. 
Uh. <laughs> 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 All right, and if you break your pump, it did not come from City Light. Uh. <laughs> but very good. We must change the way that we think about our part in this place. Again, I say that it's probably not the issue that everybody's just walking around with their head in the clouds thinking they are God's gift to City Light Baptist Church. Uh, in fact, I know that's not the problem for 99% of the people that sit in this room. The, the problem or the challenge really would be is that to help you understand that even though you've been here six months or even though maybe you're not even quite a member yet or you've been here, you just got saved last year, is to understand the value that is locked inside of you, that you are important important enough for Jesus Christ to die on the cross for you uh, and important enough for him to pour his Holy Spirit's grace into you so that you could be connected to a body, not just to say, yeah, I go to church there. I go to, yeah, I'm just, yeah, that's my pastor, that's my church, that's my thing. But that there's a part for you, a valuable part. And it's not just, well, if I get to do it, that's great. And if I don't, it's just me. It's just my life. It's just my thing. Like, no, no man is an island in this, in this scenario. You are part of the body. We're members one of another, okay, of this one body. And so the foot, if I'm the foot, I can't say to the ear, I don't need you. We'll do it without you. No, that's just not true. We can do it. We can hobble, you know, we can hobble down the, the road, but it's not going to be as effective. It's not going to be what God really wanted for that. And so we find uh, in, it's important that we understand our part uh, in this place. Last week we talked about two emotional needs that every person has, the need uh, for security and significance, to know that they're loved and know that they're valued. In our passage in Romans 12, I think it's important to highlight that we see, first of all, that need for security is met by the mercies of God. The Bible says, I, I beg you by the mercies of God that you'd present your bodies a living sacrifice. He's not saying, you better do this or I'm going to punch you in the nose. You better do this or you're going to get in trouble. He's, he's saying, By the, because of the love of God, because God loves you, because of what he did for you, because nobody else on the planet may love you, may value you, may like you just the way you are, but know this is that God does. That when we try to find security in the arms of some other person, it may imitate And it may sample, but it will never be sufficient. It will never substitute for the love that God offers to each and every one of us. Please know that God loves you. Secondly, we see that through the grace of God, we have significance. It's not that Jesus just saved you and now he says, all right, we'll see you in heaven one day. But no, he he says, you're a value. I've chosen to glorify my name through human beings. I've chosen to multiply my message through the mouths of human beings. I've chosen to build my church where my presence is and where my glory shines and where I do my work through in this present age. I've chosen to do it through human beings. And so I've poured through the Holy Spirit grace into each one of them, different measures, different ways, different gifts, but they're all super important because it's one body that they're connected to through Jesus Christ. And so, look, whether... Some of us might sit here this morning and think, well, I'm not significant. No, I don't matter to anybody in my life. I'm 40 years old. I haven't done anything. I, I, like, and we go through maybe a, a mini midlife crisis, if you will. I want you to understand that you are absolutely significant to God. So much so that he gave you his grace, something valuable to be used in the life of this team, this body, this church. Uh, and each one of us need that. Uh, from one another we're significant we sometimes we try to look for our significance uh, in different things I mean this week I wore my Kansas City stuff as much as I could and I walk around and uh, people say yeah good Kansas City. yeah we won we did it you know and all I did was sit on the couch and go oh, like like this uh, you know for three hours uh, uh, I didn't really do anything but we all like to be a part of something that wins Something that's significant, something that makes a difference, something that makes an investment, something that makes a change. And look, you may be a 49ers fan this morning, but you're still significant. (laughs) Uh, And here's why is because 
inside of you is the grace of God. Not to be stolen and not to spit on, but to soberly use it to serve one another, to serve our community, to shine for Jesus Christ. Attitude precedes action. Until we really get this, that you're valuable and significant to God, you'll never do anything with it. Uh, you may every once in a while, I'll volunteer, fine, get the preacher off my back, let's, let's just do it, let's do the big day thing, okay. Whew, like that's over. But that really won't make a difference. But when you understand what is inside of you through the Holy Spirit and the significant part you play in the history of mankind and God's story as He's redeeming mankind through the gospel, uh, it changes our action, attitude before action. When we see also that security and significance precede sacrifice, they pre- it precedes surrender. And this is what I mean. The Bible says be a living sacrifice. Hey, the 60, 70, 80, 100 years that you get on this planet, take them and give control of them to God. And we think, wait a minute. I don't know about that. Like, I've got plans. I've got things I want to do. Like, I got, I've, got, I've been dreaming about this for years. I've I got this career. I've got this thing when I retire. I got, man, I, I really want to. And you want me to give that over to God? How would I ever get to a point where I would give these things over to God? And here's how is that we would see and understand the security that we have or the love that we have in Jesus Christ, what He's done for us. Even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The incredible providential plan from before the foundation of the world that God would bring about the redemption of mankind and then reach down into this puny little country called America uh, with the Holy Spirit and bring you the message of Jesus Christ uh, to save your wicked soul and my wicked soul. The, The love of God is unmatched by any other love on the planet. You may have the best husband or the best spouse in the world, but I'm telling you, they may love you to death. But they don't love you like God loves you. And their love is not always consistent. Because they're human, it wanes and it changes, especially when your husband talks out loud in church. No, I'm kidding. I'm asking. <laughs> but here's, here's the thing is that also significance precedes surrender. Why would I give my life to God? What is he going to do with it? He's going to take it and throw it away. He's going to ruin it. He's going to mess it up. I've got a plan. No, but when you understand that God loves you, that God is committed to the good of your life, and that what Romans says is that it's the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What you will find out when you surrender, I like this. This is good. This like makes my life actually count and actually matter. You'll never surrender anything to God until you understand His security that He offers through His love and a significance or meaning to your life. That he brings because of the great, this one thing is that he pours grace in your life to connect to a body of believers, to build faith, and to reach a world for Jesus Christ. It's the most significant thing you'll ever do with your life. And when you grab a hold of that, then you'll gladly say, Here's, here it is. Here's my life. Here's my time. Here's everything that I am. I'm a, I'm a living sacrifice for you. In just a minute, we're going to play a song, and we're just going to have a quiet time with heads bowed and eyes closed where uh, I want to ask you to pray about a few things. One, we've, we've we brought to you four different areas uh, this morning of the focus of our year. Some of those are actionable right now, where you could circle a city group, put your name, say, hey, I know I need to be a part of one of those groups. I want to jump in. Some of you say, hey, I want to be a coach, or I need to be a coach. Some would say, uh, I want to do the love focus thing. That sounds like something that I need uh, in my life. And we can, even in this moment, you could fill those out. Uh, some people in the first service, they came to the front and they just left their papers on the front and they prayed and said, God, would you use me uh, in this way? God, would you help me this year uh, to see a revolution? Not one that's forced, not one that's manipulated, not one that the preacher you know, turned, twisted my arm, but I, I, I want this. I, I can't control you with my words. That only lasts for a few weeks, maybe. But I want us to grab a hold this year of the love of God and what He's doing for us and has done for us. And, and when we see that, it makes being a living sacrifice what's the most logical thing you could do with your life. Because I'm secure in Jesus, I'm significant to Him, but He can have whatever He wants. 
And so in this moment, uh, as we come, uh, maybe you just want to come and kneel down and say, God, I, I want to I, I I change the way I use my hands, the way I serve. I want to change the way my part in this place. And maybe one of these areas is, you know, hey, I know I need to do this now. Uh, I think that these are all important areas. This is where our church is headed. There's a thousand wonderful things churches can do and be a part of. And I believe these are the things that God has given to us, the next step for us and our church. Uh, and so I want to encourage you to say, well, my group isn't that great. I don't really like I'm just going to, not this year, not really for me. No, that's the way to hurt that. You know, like if it's not everything you think it ought to be, guess what? Jump on in. Help it. Grow it. Be a part of the solution rather than just, you know, being eh about it. Let's join in to this. Let's connect to Christ. Let's connect to our body and allow God to use us. You have something I need, and I have something you need. We need to be connected together uh, through this cause. Uh, as we live for Jesus Christ. Let's stand, please, with our head, close our eyes. Um, as they play through this song, I want to encourage you just to slip on out of your seat, find a place where we can pray and say, God, would you help our church to be what you want it to be in 2020? Folks, I don't want to have one extra service in this place that God does not want us to have. But I do want to do as many things as God leads us to do to help uh, his name be glorified, to help you grow for the Lord Jesus Christ. God spoke to you about one of these areas today. I want to I encourage you to just come and let's spend some time in prayer. I'm going to be quiet. Um, they'll play through the song, but as God speaks to your heart, I pray that you'll move and just in some way, just like Romans 12 says, to present ourselves. Here I am at this altar as a living sacrifice. Here's my life, Lord. I surrender it to you. I want to be part of what my church is doing uh, in this year as we move forward. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the opportunity to serve you. Lord, I pray that from this church, there would be a, a heart of an attitude of, of love for you because of what you've done for us. Lord, may we use our hands to glorify your name to help others find the light of the glorious gospel. Lord, would you help our church in this year not to be one that's behavior has been modified? Lord, that would be a form of being conformed to the world where some well-meaning Christian people on this planet would say, hey, it's got to be done 
this way, do these things. It's not a formula. Lord, what we're asking for is to be transformed from the inside out. That our minds would be renewed. That there'd be new thinking that comes from the Word of God. That changes what's on the inside. And through the process of time is seen on the outside. Father, I've spent months thinking and preparing to get to this point to explain how the gospel saves us from our everyday life. Lord, I pray that you would just help me to be able to put it right where it can be understood and be helpful, impactful, and life-changing. Lord, I pray that our church would be equipped to not just be good doing our thing, but that we would see a oneness of a coming together, of a unity around the cause of Christ in our church. May we see coaches come forth. May we see counselors come forth. May we see city groups come forth because of the living sacrifices in this room. And Father, for all that you accomplished through our lives and through this church, we'll be sure to give you the glory and credit for it. For we ask these things in Christ's precious name.